world how wonderful is the living world the wide range of living types is amazing the extraordinary habitat in which we find living organisms we eat cold mountains deciduous forest ocean fresh water lakes deserts or hot springs leaves us speechless the beauty of a galloping horse of the migrating birds the value of a flower or the attacking shark evokes away and a deep sense of wonder the ecological conflict and cooperation among members of a population and among populations of a community or even the molecular traffic inside a cell makes us deeply reflect on what indeed is life this question has two implicit question within it the first one is a technical one and six answers to what living is as opposed to the non living and the second is a philosophical one and six answer to the what the purpose of life as scientists we shall not attempt answering the second question we will try to reflect on what is living 1.1 what is living when we try to define living we conventionally look for distinctive characteristics exhibited by living organism growth reproduction ability to sense environment and mount of suitable responses come to our mind immediately as unique features of living organism one can add a few more features like metabolism ability to self replicate self organize interact in emergence to this list let us try to understand each of these all living organisms grow increase in mass and increase in number of individuals are twin characteristics of growth a multicellular organism grow by cell division in plants this growth by cell division occurs continuously throughout their life spans in animals this growth is seen only up to a certain age however cell division occurs in certain tissues to replace lost cells unicellular organisms grow by cell division one can easily observe this in in vitro cultures by simply counting the numbers of cells under the microscope in majority of higher animals and plants Growth and reproduction are mutually exclusive events. One must remember that increase in body mass is considered as growth. Non-living objects also grow if you take increase in body mass as a criterion for growth. Mountains, boulders, and sand mounds do grow. However, this kind of growth exhibited by non-living object objects is by accumulation of material on the surface. In living organisms, growth is from inside. Growth therefore cannot be taken as a defining property of living organism. Conditions under which it can be observed in all living organisms have to be explained. and then we understand that it is a characteristics of living system or dead organism doesn't grow reproduction reproduction likewise is a characteristics of living organism in multicellular organism reproduction refers to the production of progeny possessing features more or less similar to those of parents invariably and implicitly we refer to sexual reproduction organism reproduced by asexual means also fungi multiply and spread easily due to the million of asexual spores they produce in lower organism like yeast and hydra we observe budding in planaria flatworms we observe true regeneration of fragmented organism regenerate the whole uh, lost part of its body and becomes a new organism the fungi the filamentous algae the protonum of mosses all easily multiply by fragmentation when it comes to unicellular organism like bacteria unicellular algae or amoeba reproduction is synonymous with growth increase in number of cells we have already defined growth as equivalent to increase in cell number or mass hence we notice that in single cell organism we are not very clear about the uses of these two terms growth and reproduction further there are many organisms which do not reproduce mule sterile worker bee infertile human couples hence reproduction also cannot be an all inclusive if refining property of living organism of course no non living object is capable of reproducing or replicating by itself Another characteristic of life is metabolism. All living organisms are made up of chemicals. These chemicals, small and big, belonging to the various classes, size, functions, etc., are constantly being made and changed into some other biomolecules. These conversions are chemical reactions or metabolic reactions. There are thousands of metabolic reactions occurring simultaneously inside all living organisms, be they unicellular or multicellular. All plants, animals, fungi, and microbes exhibit metabolism. The sum total of all the chemical reactions occurring in our Our body is metabolism. No non-living non object exhibits metabolism. Metabolic reactions can be demonstrated outside the body in cell-free system. An isolated metabolic reaction outside the body of an organism performed in a test tube is neither living nor non-living. Hence, while metabolism is a defining feature of all living organisms, without exception, isolated metabolic reactions in vitro are not living things but solely living reactions. Hence, cellular organization of the body is the defining feature of life forms. Perhaps the most obvious and technically complicated feature of all living organisms is this ability to sense their surroundings or 
environment and response to these environmental stimuli which could be physical chemical or biological we sense our environment through our sense organs plants response to external factors like light water temperature other organism pollutants etc all organisms from the prokaryote to the most complex eukaryotes can sense and respond to environmental cues photoperiod affects reproduction in seasonal breeders both plant and animals all organisms handle chemicals entering their bodies all organisms therefore are aware of their surroundings human being is the only organism who is aware of himself has self consciousness 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 therefore becomes the defining property of living organism when it comes to human beings it is all the more difficult to define the living state we observe persons like com- like in coma in hospitals virtually virtually supported by machines which replace hearts and lungs the patient is otherwise brand dead the patient has no con- self consciousness or such patients who never come back to normal life living or non living in higher classes you will come to know that all living phenomena are due to underlying interactions properties of tissues are not present in the constituent cell but arise as a result of interactions among the constituent cells similarly properties of cellular organelles are not present in the molecular constituent of the organelle but arise as a result of the interactions among the molecular component co- uh, comprising the organelles these interactions result in uh, emergent properties at a higher level of organization this phenomena is true in the hierarchy of organizational complexity at our levels therefore we can say that living organisms are self replicating evolving and self regulating interactive system capable of responding to external stimuli biology is the story of life on earth biology is the story of evolution of living organisms on earth all living organisms present past and future are linked to one another by the sharing of common genetic material real but to varying degrees 1.2 diversity in the living world if you look around you will see a large variety of living organisms be it potted plants insects birds your pets or other animals and plants there are also several organisms that you can not see with your naked eye but they are all around you if you if you were to increase the area that you make observation in the range and variety of organisms that you see would increase obviously if you if you were to visit a dense forest you would probably see a much greater number and kinds of living organism in it each different kind of plant animal or organism that you see represents a species the number of species that are known and described range between 1.7 to 1.8 million this refers to biodiversity or the number and type of organism present on earth we should remember here that as we explore new areas and even old ones new organisms are continuously being identified as i stated earlier there are millions of plants and animals in the world we know that uh, plants and animals in our own area by their local names these local names would vary from place to place even within our country probably you will recognize the confusion that would be created if we didn't find ways and means to talk to each other to refer to organisms we are taking or uh, talking about hence there is a need to standardize the naming of living organisms such that a particular organism is known by the same name all over the world this process is called nomenclature obviously nomenclature or naming is only possible when the organism is described correctly and we know what organism the name is attached to this is identification in order to facilitate the study number of scientists have established procedure to assign a scientific name to each known organism this is acceptable to biologists all over the world for plants mm, scientific names are based on agreed principles and criteria which are provided in international code for botanical nomenclature icbn you may ask how are animals named uh, animal taxonomists have evolved international code of zoological nomenclature icjn the scientific names ensure that each organism has only one name description of any organ should enable the people in any part of the world to arrive at the same time same name they also ensure that such a name has not been used for any other organism biologists follow universally accepted principles to provide scientific names to known organisms each name has two components the generic name and the specific epithet the system this system of providing a name with two components is called binomial nomenclature this naming system gives when by careless linnaeus is being practiced by biologists all over the world this naming system using a two word format was found convenient let us take the example of mango to understand the way of providing scientific names better the scientific name of mango is written as mangifera indica let us see how it is a binomial name in this name mangifera represents the genus while indica it is a particular species or a specific a specific epithet other universal rules of nomenclature are as follows number 1 biological names are generally in latin and written in italics they are latinized or derived from latin e respective of their origin number 2 the first word in a biological name represents the genus while the second component denotes the specific epithet number 3 both the words in a biological name when handwritten are separately underlined or printed in italics to indicate their latin origin 
नंबर फोर द फर्स्ट वर्ड डी नोट द जीनस स्टार्ट विद कैपिटल लेटर वाइल द स्पेसिफिक विथेट स्टार्ट विद स्मॉल लेटर इट कैन बी इलिस्ट्रेटेड विद द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ मैंगी फेरा इंडिका नेम ऑफ अदर द अदर ऑथर पेयर्स और आफ्टर द स्पेसिफिक एफिटेट एट द एंड ऑफ द बायोलॉजिकल नेम एंड इट जेट एन इन एन एबेटेड फॉर्म मैंगी फेरा एंडिका लिन इट इंडिकेट्स दैट दिस स्पेसिज और फर्स्ट डिस्क्राइब बाई लीनियर्स सिंस इट इज ऑनियरली इम्पॉसिबल टू स्टडी ऑल द लिविंग ऑर्गेनाइज इट इज नेसेसरी टू डिवाइड सम मीन्स टू मेक दिस पॉसिबल दिस प्रोसेस इज क्लासिफिकेशन एंड क्लासिफिकेशन इज द प्रोसेस बाई विच एनीथिंग इज ग्रुप्ड इन टू कन्वीनियंट कैटेगरीज बेस्ड ऑन सम इजली ऑब्जर्वेबल कैरेक्टर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी इजली रिकॉगनाइज ग्रुप सच एज प्लांट्स और एनिमल्स और डॉग कैट्स और इंसेक्ट्स The moment we use any of these two terms, we associate dog, cats, or insects. The moment we use uh, uh, we use any of these terms, we associate certain characters with the organism in that group. What image do you see when you think of a dog? If obviously, each one of us will see dogs and not cats. Now, if we if we we were to think of Alsatians, we know that we are talking about similarly. Suppose we were to say mammals, you you would. would of course think of animals with external ears and body hair likewise in plants if we were to, we try to talk of wheat the pictures in each of our, our mind will be of wheat plants not of rice or any other plant hence all these dogs cats mammals wheat rice plants animals it is same all or convenient categories we used to study organisms the scientific term for these categories is taxa here you must recognize the taxa can indicates categories at very different levels plants also forms a taxa wheat is also a taxa similarly animals mammals frogs or all taxa but you know that a dog is a mammal and mammals are animals therefore animal mammals and dog represent taxa at different levels hence based on characteristics all living organisms can be classified into different taxa the process of classification is taxonomy external and internal structure along with the structure of cell development process and ecological information of organisms are essential and form the basis of modern taxonomic studies hence characterization identification classification and nomenclature are the process that are basic to taxonomy taxonomy is not something new human beings have always been interested in knowing more and more about the various kinds of organism particularly with reference to their own use in early days human beings needed to find sources for their basic needs of food clothing and shelter hence the earliest classification were based on the uses of various organisms human beings were since long not only inter- interested in knowing more about different kinds of organisms and their diversity but also the relationship among them this branch of study was referred to as systematics the word systematics is derived from the latin word systema which means systematic arrangement of organisms linnaeus used systema natura as the title of his publication the scope of systematics was later enlarged to include identification nomenclature and classification systematics takes into account evolutionary relationship between organisms 1.3 taxonomic categories classification is not a single step process but involves hierarchy of steps in which each step represents a rank or category since the category is a part of overall taxonomic arrangement it is called the taxonomic category and all categories together constitutes the uh, constitute the um, taxonomic hierarchy each category is referred to as a unit of classification in fact represents a rank and is commonly referred as termed as taxon mm, taxonomic categories and hierarchy can be illustrated by an example insects represent a group of organisms sharing common feature like three pair of jointed legs it means insects are recognizable concrete object which can be classified and thus were given a rank or category can, uh, can you name such other other such group of organisms remember groups represents category and category for the denotes ranks and each rank or rank or taxon in fact represent a unit of classification these taxonomic groups categories are distinct biological entities and not merely morphological aggregates taxonomical studies of all known organisms have led to the development of common categories such as kingdom phylum or division for plants class order family genus and species all organisms including those in the plant and animal kingdom have all uh, species as the lowest category now the question you may ask is how to place an organism in various categories the basic requirement is the knowledge of characters of an individual or group of organisms this helps in identifying similarities and dissimilarities among the individual of the same kind of organism as well as of other kind of organism 1.3.1 species taxonomic st- studies consider a group of individual organisms with fundamental similarities as a species one should be able to distinguish one species from the other closely related species based on the distinct morphological differences let us consider mangifera indica solena tuberosum potato and panthera leo lion as all the three name indica tuberosum and leo represent the specific epithets while the first word mangifera solena and panthera are genera and represents another higher level of taxon or category each genus may have 
one or more than one specific epithets representing different organisms but having morphological similarities. For example, panthera has another uh, specific epithet called tigris and solanum includes species like nigrum and melongenia. Uh, human beings belong to the species sapiens which is grouped in the genus homo. The scientific names thus were given a human being is written as homo sapiens 1.3.2 genus. Genus comprises a group of related species which has more characters in common in comparison to species of other genera. We can say that genera are aggregates of closely related species. For example, potato and brinjal are two different species, but both belong to the genus Solenum, uh, Solenum lion, Panthera leo, leopard, Panthera pardus, and tiger Panthera tigris with several common features. All, all species of the genus Panthera. This genus differs from another genus Felis, which includes cats. 1.3.3 family. The next category family has a group of related genera with still less number of similarities as compared to genus and species. Families are characterized on the basis of both vegetative and reproductive features of plant species among plants. For example, three different genera Solanum, Petunia, and Petra are placed in the family Solanaceae. Among animals, for example, genus Panthera comprising lion, tiger, leopard is put along with genus Felis cat in the family Felidae. Similarly, if if you uh, observe the features of a cat and a dog, you will find the, some similarities and some differences as well. They are separated into two different families, Felidia and Canidia respectively. 1.3.4 Order you, you have seen uh, earlier that categories like species, genus and families are based on a number of similar characters. Generally, order and other higher taxonomic categories are identified based on the aggregates of characters. Order being a higher category is the assemblage of families which exhibit a few similar characters. The similar characters are less in numbers as compared to different genera included in a family. Plant families like Convolusiae Solanaceae are included in the order Polymenus mainly based on the floral character. The animal order Carnivora includes families like Felidae and Canidae. 1.3.5 class. This category includes related orders. For example, order Primata comprising monkey, gorilla, and gibbon is placed in class Mammalia along with order Carnivora that includes animals like tiger, cat, and dog. Class Mammalia has other order also. Phylum. 1.3.6 phylum Cl classes comprising animals like fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds, along with mammals constitute the next higher category called phylum. All these based on the common feature like presence of notochord and a dorsal holoneural system are included in phylum chordata. In case of plants, classes with a few similar characters are designed to a higher category called division. 1.3.7 kingdom all king animals belonging to various phyla are assigned to the highest category called kingdom animalia in the classification system of animals. The kingdom planty on the other hand is distinct and comprises all plants from various divisions. Henceforth, we will refer to these two um, groups as the animals and plants kingdoms. The taxonomic categories from species to kingdom have been shown in ascending order starting with species. These are broad categories. However, taxonomists have also developed subcategories in this hierarchy to facilitate more um, sound and scientific placement of various Text. Look at the hierarchy in figure 1.1. Can you recall the basis of arrangement? Say, for example, as they go higher from species to kingdom, the number of common characteristics goes on decreasing. Lower the taxa, more of the characteristics that the members within the taxon are higher the category, greater is the difficulty of determining the relationship to other taxa at the same level. Hence, the problem of classification becomes more complex. Level 1.1 indicates the taxonomic categories to which some common organisms like houseflies, mango, man, and bee belongs. Organism with their taxonomic categories. Common name, man. Biological name, homo sapiens. Genus, homo, family, hominidae, order, primata, class, mammalia, phylum, division, phylum or division, chordata. Common name, housefly, biological name, musca domestica, genus, musca, uh, uh, family, mucidae, order, diptera, class, insecta, phylum or division, orthopoda. Common name, mango, biological name, mangifera indica, genus, mangifera, family, anacardaceae, uh, order, sependels, class, dicotyledon, and uh, division, angiosperm. Common name, wheat, biological name, triticum, estivum, genus, triticum, family, poesi, order, poles, class, monocotyledon, and uh, uh, division, angiosperm. Taxonomic aids. Taxonomic studies of various species of plants, animals, and other organisms are useful in agriculture, forestry, industry, and in general in known, knowing our bioresources and their diversity. These studies would require classi correct classification and identification of organisms. Identification of organisms requires intensive laboratory and field studies. The classification of actual specimens 
of plants and animals species is essential and is the prime source of taxonomic study these are also fundamental to studies and essential for training in systematic it is used for classification of an organism and the information gathered is also stored along with the specimens in some cases the specimen is preserved for future study biologists have established certain procedures and techniques to store and preserve the information as well as the specimens some of these are explained to help you understand the uses of these aids 1.4.1 herbarium herbarium is a storehouse of collected plant specimens that are dried pressed and preserved on seeds further these seeds are arranged according to a universally accepted system of classification these specimens along with their description on herbarium seeds becomes a storehouse or repository for future use the herbarium seeds also carry a label providing information about date and place of collection english local and botanical names family collectors names herbaria also serve as quick referral system in taxonomic studies 1.4.2 Botanical Garden. This specialized gardens have collection of living plants for reference. Plant species in these gardens are grown for identification purpose and each plant is labeled in indicating its botanical scientific name and its family. The famous botanical gardens are at Q England, Indian Botanical Garden, Harvard, India, and at National Botanical Research Institute, Lucknow, India. 1.4.3 Museum. Biological museums are generally set up in an educational uh, institute such as schools co and college. Museums have collections of preserved plant and animal specimens for study and reference. Specimens are preserved in the containers or jars in preservative solution. Plants and animal specimens may also be preserved as dry specimens. Insects are preserved in insect box after ki collecting, killing, and peening. Larger animals like birds and mammals are usually stopped and preserved. Museums often have a collection of skeletons of animals too. 1.4.4 Zoological Parks. These are the places where wild animals are kept in protected environment under human care and which enable us to learn about their food habitats and behavior. All animals in a zoo are provided as far as possible the conditions similar to their natural habitats. Children love visiting these parks commonly called zoos. 1.4.5 KK is another taxonomical aid used for identification of plants and animals based on the similarities and dissimilarities. The key are based on the contrasting characters generally in a pair called couplet. It represents the choice made between two opposite options. This results in acceptance of only one and rejection of the other. Each statement in the key is called a lead. Separate taxonomic keys are required for each taxonomic category such as family, genus, and species for identification purpose. Keys are generally analytical in nature. Flora manuals, monographs, and catalog or some other means of recording descriptions. They also help in correct identification. Flora contains the actual account of habitat and distribution of plants of a given area. This provides the index to the plant species found in a particular area. Manuals are useful in providing information for identification of name of species found in an area. Monograph contains information of any one taxon.